Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. As you already know, I'm Mariela Condorena. I am so happy to be here with you in this new session. So today we have a great presentation as usual with a great speaker too. Remember that you can follow us on our network on Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok. And now we are going to consider some instructions in order to participate in this webinar. The first instruction is, as you know, please type your questions in the comment section. The answer to your questions and comments will be replied by our guest speaker at the end of the webinar in the question time section. And remember that about the exit ticket. When finishing the webinar, we will share a link for you to have access to the exit ticket, which will be available for 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes, please, teachers, consider that. And now it's time to know our guest speaker. And please, teacher David Cuadros, can you introduce him? Of course. Good. Uh, good afternoon, Miss uh, Miss Marie. Good afternoon, good everybody. Afternoon. Well, uh, it's an honor uh, to introduce to present uh, to our guest for today. However, he's going to teach us about uh, a deep dive into cooperative and collaborative learning. Aha! He is Mr. Enrique Lignan, but let me tell you about him. Just a little, just a little. Mr. Lignan has taught his years old um, at all levels for more than 15 years in Peru and the US. He holds an um, MA degree in Romance Linguistic from the University of Georgia, USA. As a teacher trainer, Enrique has presented a number of national and international events and has worked as an ELP consultant for a number of educational institutions. Welcome, Mr. Lignan. Welcome to our webinar. All right, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to uh, um, share with all of you this is a big big network and i'm always happy to to be part of it right it's uh it's really really uh a, like it, it's 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 amazing how this uh network has continued to grow uh over the the years and and, and you know uh i would say one of the advantages of the of the pandemic is that we've been able to um you know, build bridges and those virtual virtual bridges um, among colleagues, and and now we can uh, share and and learn together, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, today we're gonna be sharing. We're going to be reviewing some uh, basic concepts, and we are uh, hopefully by the end of this session we'll have a a clear idea about these uh, key concepts, right? Uh, the idea for today was. Uh, discussing the difference between cooperative and collaborative learning, uh, which is, you know, these are two main concepts that as English uh, teachers, we might have heard of, we might have used uh, in our lessons, uh, in, our, in our teaching sequences before, right? Uh, and today I would like to share with you some uh, techniques, some, some resources that you can use, right? In order to implement these two. 
All right. So we're going to spend the next um, 30 minutes with uh, some basic concepts, some key concepts. And after that, we're going to um, also answer some of your questions. All right. All right. So let me start the presentation here. Let me see. So it's a challenge to this over Zoom. OK, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so today's session is called a deep dive. Okay, deep dive into collaborative and cooperative learning. Okay, so deep dive means that we're going to look at the very specifics of it. Okay, we're going to dissect this these two concepts and, and we're going to see what the difference between these two uh, is, if there are any differences, right, and how we can apply this into our teaching. All right, so. Uh, I wanted to start with this quote for from uh, this is this this is a quote by, by Confucius. Um, you might have heard of Confucius, right? He is not the one who invent, invented Confucian, but he is a, a Chinese thinker, right? Uh, so he says, when three persons work together, each can be the teacher in some aspects, right? So think about this this uh, quote. When three persons work together, each can be the teacher in some aspects. When I see this quote, I, I think about so many, um, so many different theories of learning, right? Like constructivism and social constructivism, the importance of um, interacting with others, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today, right? Interaction, uh, uh, promoting the, uh, work right between different people among different people in the in the in the classroom all right so that our students can be the teachers of each other and we're going to see when that happens and if that's collaborative or cooperative learning all right so let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna check uh the chat too uh to see if you guys are are responding here i would like to um I would like you to interact in the chat and tell me if you have used cooperative or uh, cooperative learning or collaborative learning, right? And here's the first question for you. I would like you to answer this. Um, are cooperative and collaborative learning the same? Are they different? Um, can you answer in the chat, please? Let's see, I'd like to uh, hear from you. Are they the same? Are they different? Mm, what do you think? Let me see. I'm going to check the chat right now and see what your answers are. Are these two the same? Are they different? OK, let me see. Do they have similarities, differences? What do you think? OK, here we go. I'm here, check the chat. Okay, no, they're not the same. Most of you are saying they're not the same. That's great. So what is the difference? Okay, that's great. You all agree that they are not the same. That's true. Now, what is the difference? Can you tell me um, what are some of the difference between collaborative and cooperative learning? Okay, I see a lot of people interacting there. Thank you, thank you. Thanks to everyone for sharing uh, your thoughts. So yeah, well, they do share some similarities. Yes, and we'll, we're gonna see that. Uh, a, a lot of people use these two terms interchangeably. They might think that these two are the same, but the answer is no, they are not the same. There are going to be, uh, there are gonna be differences, important differences that we're gonna note today in our session. I hope by the end of this session, you um, can identify the differences between these two, okay? Which one is more teacher-centered? Which one is more student-centered, right? Which one um, has to do with the interdependence of the members? And which one has to do with their uh, strengths of the members, right? Um, everyone agrees that they're different, that's great. So they are not the same, they are different. And today we're going to um, analyze why they are different, okay? So let's see, let's keep moving on with our, our two concepts, okay? Let's start with cooperative learning. Cooperative learning, okay? 
uh, that's maybe you've heard of the word co-op, right? Co-op uh, and cooperative learning has to do with, um, again, working together, right? Collaborative learning is also working together. But let's watch a video to find out what uh, the difference is, what the concept of cooperative learning means. All right. So I'm going to um, share sound and we're going to watch this video. Okay, here we go. Let's see if you can. Let me see if we can play it from here. If not, we'll have to go to YouTube. No. Okay, here we go. Yes. Okay, so what? let's watch this video. And please, after we watch this video, I would like you to um, listen to this first conversation and then give me some ideas of what cooperative learning is. Okay, let's watch this video. What is cooperative learning? What are its benefits? Okay, here we go. Benefits. Listen to this conversation at a school meeting and learn about cooperative learning. To start our meeting, I want to ask if you would like to share anything about your classes this week. I started trying more cooperative learning. It's gone great so far. Great. What types of activities have you tried? We just started a group project. Each group is creating their own podcast in English. That's a great activity. What have been the benefits so far? I'm noticing that my students are building more social skills. They're practicing listening and conflict resolution. And on top of that, they're motivated and having a lot of fun. So. What is cooperative learning? In cooperative learning, students work together in groups to learn material. Okay, here's the concept, right? In cooperative learning, students work together in groups to learn material. So that has to do with working together to learn something, right? And usually it's the teacher who provides that material, okay? For example, they might participate in group projects or review each other's writing. What are the benefits of cooperative learning? The benefits of cooperative learning include building social skills, like listening and conflict resolution skills. Cooperative learning is also motivating and keeps students engaged. Have you ever tried cooperative learning? Okay, so here's the, the definition, right? So we have the definition, okay? Working together in groups to learn material. Right, so that's our definition of cooperative learning. Um, very similar to collaborative learning too, but we'll see the difference in a minute. Okay, and now let's see some of the, the benefits. What are the benefits of, of uh, cooperative learning? Um, what are some of the benefits e that, you, that you were able to get from the, from the video? What are some of the benefits? Can you type that in the chat? Were you able to hear some of the benefits? What are the benefits of cooperative learning? Cooperative learning. The benefits of cooperative learning include building social skills, like listening and conflict resolution skills. Okay, and these benefits are also very similar to collaborative learning, okay? So, building social skills. Cooperative learning is also motivating and keeps students engaged. Have you ever tried cooperative okay, learning? Okay, it keeps students engaged, right? It helps students develop their social skills, like listening and conflict resolution. Right, so these are some of the benefits of, of cooperative learning. Uh, we're gonna see some more um, specific definitions right now. Okay, so here we are. Uh, by the way, a lot of the, the materials and the, and the resources and the literature is taken from this website, American English for Educators, um, that you can find a lot of uh, resources there. And that's what I, I also kept there, um, their logo. So cooperative learning is an instructional strategy in which students work together on a common task. Okay, so that's cooperative learning. The task uh, is usually given by the teacher, right? And also the groups are assigned by the teacher. Let's look at some more information about cooperative learning. So in cooperative learning, activities are structured with each student assigned a specific role. The teacher assigns the roles in cooperative learning right? You can do it in different ways, right? How do you assign the roles um, 
in your classes. There are different ways, right? You can ask your students to count off one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? Very simple. Uh, in Zoom, you can assign specific roles or groups. You can assign the groups. Um, also, uh, you can create your own um, breakout rooms and you can decide who goes in each group, right? So in this case, um, these activities for cooperative learning are assigned by the teacher. The students are assigned a specific role. You can also tell your students, okay, you are going to be the note taker. You are going to be uh, the reporter, right? You are going to be the timekeeper, okay? So in cooperative learning, each student is going to have a role, okay? And this role can be, the role can be different, right? Note taker, reporter, right? Timekeeper, right? Um, language police, right? The person is going to make sure that everyone is speaking English in the class, in the, in the group or not, right? Um, it also depends, right? You don't have to have your students, uh, um, like, I mean, you want them to use the language, right? But maybe you can, uh, also control that in different ways, okay? You can assign different roles. That's, that's something you can do. Um, all right, now, teachers supply information for students. That's another key characteristic, key feature of um, cooperative learning, right? When you um, apply cooperative learning in your sessions, in your teaching sequences, or in your learning experiences, you are going to be the one supplying the information for your students to read and analyze. For example, you can do jigsaw reading. We're gonna see that in a minute, right? You have a paragraph, right? And then you divide the paragraph in two parts. You give half of the paragraph to one group, one group of students, have like the other half to the other group of students. And then they have to work together to put the paragraph together, right? So that's cooperative learning. The teacher is supplying the information to students. The teacher is giving the information and the resources to students and students have to complete certain tasks together, right? Another interesting activity uh, for cooperative learning is for example, uh, dicto shout, right? Or dict uh, where you're, you have a group of students uh, with a handout, right? And the other group with another handout and they have to complete or fill in the gaps uh, with the information that the other person has, right? Filling the gaps activities in pairs or in groups are great examples of cooperative learning, right? Uh, where students have to fill in the gaps, right? Student A has the information that student B needs and student B has the information that student A needs, right? So that's cooperative learning. The teacher is giving the information and the students are working together to complete those tasks, okay? So that's cooperative learning. Again, the teacher is supplying the information. A third characteristic of cooperative learning is that teachers observe, listen, and intervene where necessary, right? Let's go back to the example of the fill in the blanks activity. A student A has a, a handout, a student B has another handout. They are working together. The teacher is monitoring together, is observing, listening, right? Correcting, providing feedback, okay? Um, so though that's another characteristic, the teacher is there. It's usually a controlled activity within the classroom setting, okay? In the Zoom context, uh, for example, you can have your students do a cooperative learning activity, filling in the gaps, and then the teacher can jump in and go to the breakout rooms and listen and observe and intervene when necessary, okay? So again, um, and the third, the fourth one, the success of the group or the pair depends upon the efforts of everyone involved, right? So if you have, again, going back to the fill in the blanks, a student A is student B. A student A has information that student B needs. If a student B does not give the information to student A, then they are not going to be able to complete the task, right? They are not going to be able to complete that task. So that is uh, the, this is, these are the four main concepts of, um, of cooperative learning. There is interdependence, right? A student A depends on student B in order to complete the tasks, okay? So, um, so far, I would like to 
stop and see and summarize that cooperative learning. I, I just mentioned four main concepts, right? Four main characteristics of cooperative learning. I would like you to write some of them in the chat, right? Which is the one that you um, have used or that's stuck with you, right? That was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, I, 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 that's how I know that that's cooperative learning, right? Can you share in the chat? Let's see. Let's see who can share something that uh, about these four characteristics of cooperative learning. We mentioned four, right? Let's see who would like to share a couple of, uh, let's see, I'm going to look at the chat and see who has, okay. Okay, thank you, Gloria saying, cooperative learning is more teacher-centered, students have different roles. Thank you. And the teacher assigns those roles. Yes. Okay. Students have different roles. The teacher assigns those roles. Thank you, Gloria. Students work together. Yes. Uh, the teacher is an observer. Thank you. All right. What else do we have here for um, teacher centered? Okay. Yes, definitely. And, and it's not wrong. Okay. I want you to know that it's not wrong. Um, the, the fact that uh, cooperative learning is more teacher centered, it doesn't mean that oh my God, I'm never going to use cooperative learning because it's teacher-centered. It's totally okay. It's a, it's a nice controlled activity. It's a good way to provide feedback to your students and, and improve their skills, maybe their, their accuracy too, right? So it's not wrong. Don't totally um, discard it and say it's wrong, okay? It's, it's okay. It's, it's an activity that you can use. So... It's, it's fine, okay? So develop problem-solving skills, they build social skills, teachers observe and inter intervene where necessary, okay? That's great. So you have a lot of uh, key concepts of, um, of cooperative learning, okay? Perfect. So we're going, to, we're going to continue now and see some more characteristics, okay, of uh, cooperative learning. Let me share here. Yeah, okay, great. So remember, it's more teacher-centered, teacher-structured, and the teacher gives the information, all right? Uh, and the production is done by students, student-centered, okay. Right, that's true too, right? The production is done by students, so it's also student-centered, right? The, it, it's a combination of these two. We already discussed some of the benefits of cooperative learning. Um, it, it's gonna be built a sense of community. We're going to... Um, we're going to promote leadership skills and communication skills. There's going to be conflict resolution. It's motivating, high engagement, and less competition. But you know what? I'm going to tell you here. It's actually, this is, these are the, the characteristics or the, the benefits of both. Not only cooperative learning, not only cooperative learning, but also collaborative learning. In this case, these are the benefits of both. And we're going to see that in a minute, and we're going to see why, okay? But these are the benefits of both. Now, let's see some of the concepts of, um, of cooperative learning, okay? Some of the key concepts. And please remember this because this is on your exit ticket, okay? This key concept is on your exit ticket. So remember this. Positive interdependence. What happens when you have a student A and a student B? A student A needs to complete a worksheet with information and student B has the information, right? There is interdependence, right? A student A requires and depends on the work of student B in order to complete this activity. That is cooperative learning, okay? Interdependence. When students are working in a group or in pairs and they feel that working together is beneficial, right? It's beneficial for each other. The success of the group depends on the participation of everyone in the group, okay? Or in the pair. If a student B does not give the information to student A, student A is not going to be able to complete the task. There is interdependence. And same for student B, right? So that's cooperative learning, okay? Another, um, another activity similar for cooperative learning, we're gonna see in a minute, is uh, when you use something like a jigsaw reading, right? As, as I was telling you before, you have one paragraph and you have a student A has one part of the paragraph, a student B has another part of the paragraph, right? So a student A and a student B have to work together to summarize the whole paragraph, 
So if a student A does not give the information to student B, they are not going to be able to put the paragraph together. Interdependence. They are going to depend on each other to complete a task. All right? They are going to... Um, they are going to depend on each other. Yes, uh, Annelise is saying InfoGap activities. Those are amazing. And yes, that's a great example of cooperative learning, InfoGap activities, okay? Right, let's move on. So this is interdependence. So please remember this. This is something that you're going to see in uh, the exit ticket, okay? A key concept of cooperative learning is interdependence. Student A depends on student B or the group members depend on the participation of the other members of the group interdependence okay they depend on each other okay let's move on another characteristic of cooperative learning is intentional grouping the teacher chooses who will work together remember in cooperative learning the teacher chooses okay the students are not going to choose who they want to work with the teacher chooses who will work in order to will work together in order to give students the most benefit. For example, one might mix students with stronger language skills with students who are beginners, right? So the teacher is going to be very intentional about the grouping. The students are not going to decide who they want to work with, okay? So that's another characteristic of cooperative learning. There's going to be intentional grouping, okay? You look at your list of students, you have 30 students and you say, okay, uh, these are the best students. Maybe they are taking lessons at a private language school. So I want them to work with these students who have never taken extra lessons and who have challenges with the language. So you want to mix them together, right? So that they can, uh, again, have this interdependence, right? And maybe the stronger students can help the ones who are uh, have a lower level of uh, English language skills. So intentional grouping. The teacher is going to decide, the teacher is going to choose. Again, teacher, in this case, it's, it's more teacher controlled, all right? Let's look at this. Uh, here's a situation. What would you do in this situation? I'd like to hear your, your thoughts. I'd like to hear your uh, opinions. Let's see. May, let's imagine this, this is happening for you, okay? You're, you're always looking for ways to engage your students and promote interaction in your classroom. Because of this, you like to allow students to work in groups as much, as much as possible. You have large classes, right? Let's imagine you have 40 students in your class. You don't have a lot of time to create groups in advance and usually allow students to choose them instead. You tell them like, okay, you go and choose, okay? However, you have noticed that students always work in the same groups and you would like them to interact with new classmates. So what would you do in this situation? How would you group your students? I'd like to hear some um, ideas in the chat. I'd like to read some ideas in the chat, okay? All right, let's see. Oh, th yeah, there are a couple of questions. We're gonna answer questions at the end. I'd like to hear some of your um replies or your thoughts around this situation, right? Uh, again, remember that cooperative learning promotes intentional grouping. The teacher is going to decide who will be working with who, right? That's intentional grouping. And there's also interdependence, right? Uh, student A and student B are gonna work together and then student A needs the information that student B has, right? So what would you do in this situation, okay? A raffle, okay, Jaime saying a raffle. Hi, Jaime, uh, thank you for joining. Okay, you can, you can raffle and you can, you know, mix up uh, the, the, part, the interactions with, between your students, that's great. What else can you do? Uh, I would make them count, okay? So counting off and group them according to the numbers, okay? Karin is also saying a raffle, okay? So there are different ways to do that, right? You can even like ask your students to uh, choose a color, right? If you want, if you want to practice vocabulary, right? You want them to, uh, um, you know, name an animal, right? Like, uh, you know, have zoo animals. You have pets, right? And then you divide it by by that. There are different ways of grouping your students, right? 
Um, but this is, again, intentional grouping is a key concept in cooperative learning, right? You need to make sure that uh, your students are being grouped in an intentional way so that you, they can make the most of the activity. All right, so after we've revised uh, some of the key concepts, right? These are the key concepts, remember? The teacher assigns, teacher gives the information, teacher observes, right? There is interdependence, right? These are the key concepts of cooperative learning. Now let's move on to uh, discuss collaborative learning, okay? So what is collaborative learning, okay? What is this? There, of course, there are a lot of similarities, right? A lot of the benefits we discussed um, that, that pertain to uh, cooperative learning also have to do with collaborative learning. There's going to be interaction. There's going to be people working together. There's going to be skills development, social skills, right? Uh, but what is the difference then? What is the difference? Let's see. Here are some of the key concepts regarding collaborative learning. All right. So let's see. What are some of the key concepts here? So students organize their efforts between themselves. Is students structured? So here, when we have collaborative learning, you usually have your students decide what role they want to take in the, the assignment or the task that you give them, right? Remember in the other one, the teacher would assign groups and would assign roles. But here, roles are organized depending on students' efforts, right? Who wants to be the note taker? Who wants to be the, the reporter, right? Another important characteristic, look at the second one. Students source materials, okay, to help them complete the activity. So it's not going to be something that the teacher is going to give students, right? The teacher is not going to tell them, okay, here's a fill, fill in the gap exercise, right? Where you have student A and student B and student A is going to give the information to student B and vice versa. Here, students are going to go, right? Do their own research. They're gonna find their own materials. They're going to need to uh, look for other resources, okay? So that's another characteristic of collaborative learning. The teacher is not, to, is not going to give them the materials. It's not going to give them the information, student, the information. Students are going to have to uh, find their own information and find their own resources, all right? So that's another key characteristic of uh, collaborative learning. What is another um, characteristic? Students will work independently. What does that mean? That the teacher is not going to be there to provide feedback or to observe and monitor all the time, right? When we um, use collaborative learning in the class, in the classroom, we are going to allow our students to work independently, right? And we're going to, and, and our students are going to be able to consult with other experts, right? And that's when we can promote the zone of proximal development. Right, this is ZPD, Zone of Proximal Development, and ding, 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 ding. Here's another um, characteristic that you need to keep in mind for, uh, for, the, for the exit ticket, okay? Zone of Proximal Development, right? This is a, a theory proposed by Liv Vygotsky, right? And Vygotsky proposes the Zone of Proximal Development, right? Which is, a, which is what happens when, uh, learners interact with people who are experts, right? People who have a higher level of knowledge, skills, and attitudes regarding a specific or particular topic, right? So students can work independently and they can consult with other experts. Who are these experts? Maybe it's, it's going to be somebody else in the class, right? Maybe people in the group. Maybe it's going to be uh, people outside the classroom walls, right? They can in interview people. They can reach out to uh, professionals, right? They can go to the library and, and find uh, information in uh, videos, right? And they can watch webinars, right? So that's the, the zone of proximal development. It's when you um, interact with an expert and then you reach that next level right regarding the specific topic or area that you are researching about okay so this is what happens in um in collaborative learning right you are not only restricted to the exercise or the activity that your teacher that that is, is giving you as a learner 
you can go and explore other possibilities and you can find more resources, okay? Now, students, another key characteristic is that students assess their own individual and group performance, right? The students are going to look at how much progress they're making and how they're performing, right? And what changes they need to make. And finally, success depends on individual strengths, right? Each student is going to have strengths and they're going to bring those strengths to the group, right? There's not going to be that interdependence that we discussed before in cooperative learning, right? Where you have gap filling exercises, but here it's gonna have to do with the strengths that you bring to the table, right? Your own skills, your own abilities, right? Your own knowledge. And you bring that to the group and as a group, you can reach that common goal, all right? So that's the big difference between these two. I took this, um, this summary here. Uh, this chart is taken from an article by Rebecca Oxford, right? Uh, this article, I will share this article with you uh, at, the, at the end of the presentation. And also, I'll also share this with uh, Mariela and the English Teachers in Peru team so that you can read this article. It's a really nice article and it summarizes very well the difference between cooperative and collaborative learning and also interaction. She, she discusses these three strands. Uh, but we're going to focus on these two, co cooperative and collaborative learning, okay? So the purpose, what is the purpose of cooperative learning? It's to enhance the cognitive and social skills via a set of known techniques. It's known techniques, right? You, the teacher gives students this information. The teacher is structuring it, right? You want your students to learn, right? To improve their, their cognition and their social skills, but you are going to tell your students how to do it, right? Remember? filling the gap exercises, student A, student B, you know, put the paragraph together, right? Student A, student B, that's the jigsaw reading, right? However, when we discuss collaborative learning, it has to do with the acculturation process, right? The acculturation process means that learners are going to get used to doing research. Learners are going to get used to being part of knowledge communities, right? It goes beyond just completing one specific task that the teacher is going to give. They're going to do their research on their own, right? So now what is the degree of structure? It means from the teacher, from the teacher. What is the structure that these two activities give? In terms of cooperative learning, there's a lot of structure. As a teacher, you need to supply the materials. As a teacher, you need to create the activity right? There is high, a high level, a high degree of structure. In terms of collaborative learning, it's variable. You can give your students the project, for example, you can give them a project and they can work on the project. You can give them some resources maybe, but they can find their other resources. So there's not a lot of structure, right? The structure will vary depending on the task. You don't have to create a lot of information or you don't have to create a lot of uh, or give them a lot of um, resources. Right, I degree of structure. In terms of collaborative learning, it's variable. You can give your students a project, for example, you can give them a... All right, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, there was someone with their mic on here. All right, so relationships. What about relationships? Um, individual, like each person, each learner, each group member is accountable to the group and vice versa. The teacher facilitates, but the group is primary. What does this mean? The relationship, remember what I was telling you before. In cooperative learning, a student A and a student B. A student A needs the information that student B has and student B needs the information that student A has, right? So there is the interdependence, interdependence, right? In collaborative learning, is learner engages with more capable others. Zone of proximal development. Remember that key concept. Collaborative learning promotes the zone of proximal development. More capable authors, experts. Who can those experts be? Teachers, advanced peers within the classroom who can provide assistance and guidance and more information, right? Collaborative learning has to do with zone of proximal development, getting engaged, getting information from those more capable authors, those experts. 
Okay, so remember those key concepts, right? Cooperative learning, cooperative learning here has to do with interdependence. Collaborative learning, zone of proximal development. I want to go on and do research and find information and engage with capable authors, with experts, okay? Prescriptiveness of activities, what does that mean? Uh, that has to do with the structure too. It means like the preparation of the activities, right? Prescriptiveness is like how prescriptive are these activities, right? How well prepared are these activities? Very high. For cooperative learning, you need to bring the activity ready for your students to do, ready for your students to work on. You provide the activity and you tell them, this is what you have to do, step one, step two, step three. Collaborative learning, it's very low. You don't have to prescribe a lot. You don't have to tell your students what to do. You don't have to give step-by-step -step instructions in collaborative learning. They are going to have to work on their own, all right? So and remember, key concepts here. Cooperative learning, key is more teacher-centered. It is, there is interdependence, right? Intentional grouping. Collaborative learning, think about students choosing their own roles and interacting with more capable others with experts zone of proximal development okay less structure right more individual work right more sorry more uh, independent work that's what i meant independent work right as 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 a group without the teacher monitoring them okay now which one is better cooperative or collaborative learning no one is better than the other, right? You can use them at different moments in your teaching, in the year, right? I always like to give and use the example of the um, Dia del Logro, right? Dia del Logro, uh, Achievement Day, right? Dia del Logro. In Achievement Day, which one do you use? When uh, Dia del Logro, for those uh, uh, of you who are watching outside of Peru, Dia del Logro, Achievement Day, is a day when that happens twice a year, right? It's usually a day where um, learners showcase some projects that they have uh, developed as groups, right? Teachers assign projects and, and learners usually work on these projects throughout a couple of weeks, right? Or months sometimes, depending on the, on the teachers. And they showcase these projects at some point uh, for the school community. Right? Oh. So usually, usually uh, Dia del Logro, Achievement Day, what is that? What would you say? Achievement Day, is it cooperative or collaborative learning? What do you think? I'd like to both, uh, Jocelyn yeah. says both, right? We can use cooperative and collaborative learning, uh, but it's more collaborative, yeah. right? Thank you, Ruth. Yes, yeah. it's more collaborative. Okay, so let's see. Um, it's more collaborative learning, why? because you are going to, the teacher is not going to give them a lot of structure, right? There's not gonna be a lot of structure. You usually assign the project. And then you are going to, the students are going to work on their own. They're gonna find their own resources, right? They're gonna find maybe the, the, the aid or the support of experts and they are going to go and they are going to um, work on their projects and then present it, right? The teacher is not going to be they're monitoring everything that they're going to be doing, right? It can be argued that it can be both, right? There's going to be cooperation because maybe the teacher is going to be there to pr uh, providing support, right? And monitoring. Uh, but there, I would say it's, it's both. It's both. Uh, but it's more, it's more of collaborative learning. All right. So it's more of collaborative learning, I would say. Achievement Day, Dia del Logro, it's more collaborative learning. Students are usually... But again, maybe you have a group of students who is like very, like this group is like very low level and you need more hand-holding, right? So it can be more cooperative too. Uh, but in general, if you have a group of students who are maybe fifth grade, I would say it's more collaborative learning, right? It's more, it's more independent, right? There is more, uh, that's knowledge community that is being built. All right. So now we know a little bit about these two. We know the differences between these two. Uh, cooperative and collaborative learning. Let's see some activities that you can use for each of this. One very basic activity, very basic, very easy to do, is think, pair, share. Think, pair, share. 
Um, so what is think pair share? It is a teaching sequence, a teaching technique, right? It's a teaching technique, actually, not a sequence, sorry. It's a teaching technique in which students are first asked to think about their answer to a question individually. Okay, they think about their answer and then they pair up and talk about their answer with a partner. Finally, they share their thinking with the whole class. So think, pair, share. Is this collaborative or cooperative learning? What do you think? Think, pair, share. The teacher gives the a students a question, right? Teacher gives students a question. The students have to think about this question. After they think about the question, they talk to somebody, excuse me, they talk to somebody else about the question, and then they share their thinking with the whole class. So what do you think? Think pair share, is it collaborative or cooperative learning? What do you think? Think pair share. When they think pair share, is this collaborative or cooperative learning? Yes, thank you, Estela. Estela saying it's cooperative, yes. Uh, Orieta, cooperative. Yes, this is cooperative learning. Again, it's more structured, right? The teacher writes the question. The students are working together. There is interdependence. Remember, interdependence. They are going to share. I need the information that, the, that my partner is going to give me so that I can share that with the class. It's a very simple way of applying cooperative learning in the class, okay? Think, pair, share. Cooperative learning. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Conflict resolution or problem solving, okay? Conflict resolution, problem solving. When working collabor uh, collaboratively, okay? So this is, this is something that happens with uh, uh, co collaborative learning. Conflict can arise between classmates. Teacher can help, teachers can help students listen to one, another's, to one another's perspective and work to find a compromise that everyone in the group can agree. So this is something that can happen, right? When working collaboratively, right? You're going to working with a bigger group, right? And there's going to be definitely sometimes different ways of, of thinking, different ways of, of taking action, different decisions to make, right? In collaborative learning, remember, there is not so much structure. The teacher is not telling students step-by-step step what to do. So there might be some conflict, right? There might be some conflict between group members. So the teacher might need to intervene. A lot of times it's that students come to the teacher and say like, teacher, I'm doing this alone. My group members don't wanna do anything, right? So that's the challenge with collaboration. Um, I would say if you want to make sure that your students are, are successfully using collaborative learning, I would say you would need to have built this knowledge community before, beforehand. You need to make sure that you are uh, working, uh, that, that your students have already realized that working collaboratively is going to bring lots of benefits to them, okay? Because these conflicts can arise. This can definitely happen. Another activity, and this is another ding, 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 another activity uh, that you can use for collaborative learning, okay? This is another exit ticket question. Group project, gather. Yeah, so these are group projects. So uh, group projects are great examples of collaborative learning, right? So let's see, group projects are a set of tasks completed together with other students that often last longer than a typical assignment. Some examples might be filming a short movie in English, making a presentation about a poem, or writing a how-to guide to teach the class how to do something, right? So these are short projects, right? Group projects. And usually these are not done, you know, or not guided by the teacher step-by-step, step, right? They don't, you don't, you as a teacher don't have to tell your students step-by-step step what they have to do. Usually students have to work on their own. They have to find other people, right? So these is also very well connected with project-based learning, project-based learning, right? You have a project that you want your students to work on and they will work together collaboratively to complete this assignment or this group of tasks or this project, right? 
So project-based learning, again, going back to Dia de Logro, Achievement Day, this is another great example of collaborative learning. The teacher is not there guiding every, every uh, single step of the, of the process, right? The teacher is not going to tell each student what they are going to do, is not going to assign the roles. In this case, students are going to decide how they want to proceed. Students are going to find other experts. They're going to interview other people. Maybe they're going to talk to their, their, their cousin. They're going to talk to their, to their aunt. Maybe they have an aunt who is a movie, uh, like a, a film, um, like an actor maybe, right? Or like um, a film director, right? Maybe they have experience with, with, uh, with uh, making movies. So they're gonna go and talk to these people, right? And they are going to find experts who can help them with this project, zone of proximal development, okay? So this is another example of collaborative learning. Okay, and just to wrap up, we're reaching the end of our session today. I want to uh, share this case from, um, from the Minedu exam, right? Here's, Car here's the case. Uh, Carmen has planned the following teaching sequence to develop her third graders' writing skills. The teacher writes, pollution is destroying our planet and divides the word in two columns. In the first column, she writes the question, what do you know about the issue? Well, in the second column, she writes, how could we solve this issue? The students work in groups to answer both questions. Later, a member of each group goes to the board and writes some of the group's ideas in each column. Okay, until this point, is it collaborative or cooperative learning? Right, Carmen has a question. What do you know about the issue? How could we solve this issue? Two questions. The students work in groups. And then a member of the group goes to the board and writes some of the group's ideas in each column. Okay, is it collaborative or cooperative? I, I see Samuel Zavala says cooperative. Yes, this is cooperative learning, right? Interdependence, they are working together. They have, the teacher is providing the material, the teacher is providing the question. They're working together and then they report. Cooperative learning, yes, this is cooperative learning. Yes, cooperative learning, yes, okay. After that, the teacher asks the students to look for additional information that will help them put into practice the solutions they came up with. They go to the school library and take notes of some relevant ideas. So now they are going to the school library and they're gonna find more information, right? So what is happening here? Now the teacher is not giving them the materials. He's not giving them the resources. Now they have to go and find their own resources. So what is happening here? Right, the teachers, now the it says here, the teacher asks the students to look for additional information that will help them put into practice the solutions they came up with. So they can go and ask other people. They can interview other people too, right? Interview experts if they want, right? So what happens here when they go to the school library and take notes of relevant ideas? If they go to the school library, right? What is that? What would that be? Colla collaborative, yes, thank you, collaborative learning. When they go and they find the information on their own, they ask experts, they ask others, right? Great. Then the students come back to the classroom and in groups, they choose the best ideas to save our planet. Finally, the teacher asks them to work on a short text to present their ideas to the class. Now they go back to cooperative. So you see, there is, a, there is, it is, it is possible. It is possible to combine cooperative and collaborative learning together in one writing sequence. This is a great example. First, you ask your students to work together. You give them the questions. You ask them to interdependence, answer questions together. But then you tell them, go to the library, go find an expert, go interview somebody, right? And find more information, all right? And finally, they can write their text together. Okay, so that's a combination of cooperative and, co and, and um, collaborative learning. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here's another example. Dana's students have finished writing a letter. Now she wants them to revise the letter in a collaborative way. She has assigned the following sequence. Look at the sequence and let's see if this sequence is, is collaborative or maybe cooperative learning. First, the teacher pairs up the students and asks them to exchange their letters. Then she tells them to circle all the grammar mistakes they find in their peers' letter. Next, the students return the letter to their owners. 
After that, the teacher asked the students to make improvements to their own letters by correcting the grammar mistakes they found. Finally, the teacher collects the letters. Now, is this collaborative? This teacher, the teacher wants to do it in a collaborative way, but her sequence is not collaborative, right? She's not doing anything that is collaborative learning. Let's look at the sequence again. This sequence is not showing collaborative learning, right? Look, all they do is they, they circle the grammar mistakes. Is this collaborative learning? Remember, in collaborative learning, students need to find the resources their own way. They need to find experts, right? They need to believe in the in a knowledge community. They are not doing that. They're only circling grammar mistakes. So this is more cooperative learning. Thank you. Yes, so in this case, Dana, right? She's a teacher. She wants to apply collaborative learning, but she's not doing that. Right. So that's why, why maybe if she wants it to be collaborative, she can tell, go and find a more advanced uh, speaker of English and ask them to help you correct this. That would be collaborative learning. They are going and doing it on their own. They are finding experts, you know, promoting the zone of proximal development. All right. So that would be um, the criticism to Dana. Dana is not is not actually promoting collaborative learning. She's promoting cooperative learning, okay? All right. All right. This is, well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining and thank you for listening. Um, here's some, some extra resources and great articles, especially this one by Rebecca Oxford, Cooperative Learning, Collaborative Learning and Interaction. Three communicative strengths. That's amazing. You should read that one. I'll also share this with the English teachers in Peru team, and they will be able to share that with you later. All right. So thank you very much. You can find us in in Fanglish Peru. Okay. Uh, that's our that's our um, website in on sorry. That's our fan page on Facebook. All right. Thank you very. Much. Thank you so much, Diar Enrique, for this amazing presentation. Now we have some questions for you. And uh, Diar Angela, are you there? Can you start with the questions? Yes. Uh, I can. Your microphone, I don't know if your microphone is okay because I can hear you. I can hear you, dear. No. <laughs> Only mimics and gestures. <laughs> but there is no voice. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, your nice voice. Uh, it's because it's yeah, funny. now you can start with the questions. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, First question for, is from Miss Glenny Surko. She asks, uh, what English level should our students have to develop these activities? Okay, well, yeah, thank you, Angela. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so it depends, right? Uh, the, the gap filling exercise that I was discussing at the beginning can be uh, used with very elementary learners, right? Like A1 or, or you know, pre-A1. Right, gap filling exercises could be done with like very low level uh, uh, learners, and and even for collaborative learning, right? You can ask your students to go and interview an expert. They could do this interview in Spanish. It's okay. They could do it in Spanish. It's okay. So it doesn't matter if if your students don't have the like, you know. Sometimes we we think, no, if my students are low level, I can never use collaborative or cooperative learning. You can always adapt the concepts of collaborative and cooperative learning to your audience, right? So think about the main concepts and think about how your students can use those main concepts to achieve their the objectives that you have for those lessons. Thank you so much for your answer. I have another question here from Ms. Teresa Sanchez uh, Vasquez. Um, she asks, uh, if well, she's asking if you could give us some examples of two different activities for cooperative learning uh, for students in a hybrid class. 
Perfect. Yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great example. So let's remember first that the definition of uh, what a hybrid class is, right? Uh, and a hybrid class has to do with uh, you teaching a group of students in the classroom setting and also uh, either broadcasting the same class for a group of students in their houses, right? Through Zoom or any other platform, right? So that's that's what a hybrid class would be. That's, that's uh, something that we should uh, remember. Now, uh, how can you do that? Uh, again, let's let's think about gut feeling exercises. Those are great. I love gut feeling exercises. And you can have uh, there's a specific software that you can use to do gut feeling exercises and to and to um, create and generate your own uh, gut feeling exercises. I can share some uh, websites with you. And actually, there is an article that I really like. Uh, it's actually on, on the on the English uh, American English at uh, that state that gov. I'm going to share that with the team of English teachers in Peru. And they are going to share that that article with you. It's a an article with a lot of different activities that you can do and include some activities for uh, virtual learning environments. Thank you so much. Um, I also have another question here from Mr. Pedro Beltran. Uh, he says, how can learners assess their own learning and group performance? Can you give us some ideas, please? Yes. Yeah. And, and actually that's, uh, that, you know, that has to do with, uh, you know, get building the habit of doing that. Right. And, and a great way to do that, a great way to do that is, uh, having checklists at the end of your lessons, right? If you're familiar with the uh, Aprendo en Casa lesson plans that have been developed and there, that's a, an open website that anyone can review, right? In Aprendo en Casa, you will see that at the end of each lesson, you have uh, a set of, a, you know, a checklist, right? I can, or like, yo puedo, what can you do with the language, right? Like, yo puedo expresar mis opiniones sobre el COVID-19, right? I can express opinions about COVID-19 um, using should, for example, right? Uh, if you want to add some specific grammar um, structures there. So uh, you can build your own checklist, right? For a project, for example, in collaborative learning, and your students can use that checklist at the end to make sure that they are following the guidelines that you have given them, right? So checklists are a, way, way, a great way to assess uh, your students' progress. Thank you so much. I have another question here from Ms. Nancy Alvarez. She asks, um, what are the benefits of cooperative and collaborative learning? Oh wow, that's I would I would you know put the question back to you, right? Because that's something that we have discussed today. I will only I will mention uh, two, right? Uh, definitely promoting communication skills, right? And the sense of community. That's definitely something that we need to um, to promote. You know, now we are in in our in our times. If we think about what's hap happening in the world right now, you know, wars, um, you know, countries going into wars. And, and thinking about how people can have different ways, you know, of, of viewing things, right? And just starting conflict, right? Cooperative and collaborative learning will, will teach our students that we're not always gonna have the same points of view, but we need to respect each other and build that community together within our differences. That's right. It is totally true. Thank you so much for being here today. It was an amazing presentation. Every teacher enjoyed every part of this session. I think there are like a lot of more questions and uh, I think you have been answering many of them during the, the presentation too. So the only thing that I can say is thanks again for being here. I hope we can see you back again. So, and I want you to, I want to invite you to stay with us for a little bit more so we can do the next part of this webinar. Thanks again for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, now it's time. Thank you so much, Enrique and Miss uh, Angela Salazar for this, for this, for answer these questions. Now it's time to know uh, our guest speakers for the next week. Y para esto, 
tenemos a teacher Elmer Quispe, que nos va a ayudar eh, con conocer a quienes tenemos la próxima semana. Voy iniciando yo para que podamos correr rapidísimo antes con el exit ticket porque tenemos una presentación especial y para la próxima semana tenemos a nuestro uh, estimado Michael Navarro. Ya lo conocemos, muchos de nosotros sabemos que son sus sesiones súper activas, eh, bastantes estrategias. Y la próxima semana, el día viernes, para ser exactas, a las seis de la tarde, nos está acompañando con el webinar Teaching Visual Literacy to Enhance Students' Critical Thinking Skills. Eh, y los objetivos de este taller son los siguientes. By the end of the session, teachers will be able to effectively use videos and images to promote critical thinking. And another, uh, another objective is that teachers will be able to apply visual literacy techniques to foster communicative language practice. And teachers will be able to discover the benefits of visual literacy as well as incorporate activities and resources adaptable to the classroom. Entonces, no nos perdamos. La siguiente clase va a estar muy, muy interesante. El siguiente webinar para el día viernes a las seis de la tarde están todos cordialmente invitados. ¿Y qué tenemos el día sábado? Una edición súper especial en English Teachers in Perú. Perú. Tenemos Reopening Schools in Perú. Look forward to seeing our students. Y eso es muy cierto. Ya estamos realmente a poquísimo, poquísimo de eh, regresar a nuestras instituciones educativas, queridos maestros, queridos colegas. Primero, seguramente, para volver a ver a nuestros colegas y en unas semanas más para volver a ver a los estudiantes. ¿Y qué va a suceder el próximo sábado? Vamos a tener un roundtable. Vamos a tener eh, una mesa redonda con la participación de diferentes maestros. Teachers in Perú will soon return to schools in the morality of in person and the purpose is to connect with teachers in Peru, to share and exchange experiences and to reassure them that things will be just fine. Vamos a compartir experiencias y van a estar presentes como moderador de esta roundtable, Mr. Jesús Nicho Luján, uh, University Instructor in Peru, la psicóloga Magister Nancy Álvarez Peña, University Instructor in Peru too, y de igual manera vamos a tener en el panel de invitados, nos van a compartir sus experiencias, los siguientes maestros. ¿Para qué? Para que podamos nosotros compartir también estrategias que de repente pues, podemos utilizar en, en esta nueva modalidad semipresencial, enseñanza híbrida que se nos viene. Va a estar con nosotros el magíster Alexander Mohan, que es Chase Language Arts Teacher and Senior Team Leader at Divin Public Schools de este Estados Unidos. Nos va a reportar la experiencia que él ya ha tenido porque allá ya regresaron hace buen tiempo a clases y la experiencia que han tenido con, uh, con este retorno. Va a estar con nosotros también el magíster César Augusto Suárez Soto, que es English Teacher at San José de Monterrico School in Surco, en IPNA. También tiene la experiencia del retorno. Recordemos que las instituciones privadas, muchas de ellas, um, han retornado ya desde el año pasado, al menos de manera semipresencial, y seguramente hay mucho que contarnos y muchas estrategias y tips que darnos también para que entre English Teachers podamos compartir todo ello y, y aprender y quedar listos. Tenemos también la presencia de Magister Jeredi Arce Mesa, desde Ecuador, English Teacher at Francisco Contreras Verdugo en La Paz, Baja California Sur, perdón, desde México, sorry, desde México y eh, en México también recordemos que ellos regresaron a la presencialidad y ahora estamos, están en la enseñanza híbrida, así que hay muchas experiencias que seguramente van a servirnos también a nosotros. Tenemos a la licenciada Annie Marinel Delgado Sornosa, English Teacher en Unidad Educativa Pueblo Nuevo de Puerto Viejo, Ecuador, en donde también ya han regresado a la semipresencialidad al menos. Tenemos a la Magister Sari Rocío Espina Bernal desde Colombia, English, French, Spanish and Social Studies Teacher in Colombia. Y tenemos también en Perú al licenciado Kurt J. Vilela Matos, 
English teacher and coordinator at Institución Educativa Chincha y Suyo in Junín, Huancayo. Y a todos nuestros colegas, teachers de diferentes países van a compartirnos experiencias, estrategias que seguramente estamos, vamos a estar muy felices de poder conocer. Ahora sí, te dejo, querido Kurt, para que puedas presentar el Exit Ticket. Ok, thank you, Mary. Bien, seguro ya lo has estado viendo y ahí está disponible el Exit Ticket por solo 15 minutos, así que supongo que ahorita ya estás tomando nota de cuáles son las letras que debes de um, textear en el explorador. Empiezo a deletreártelas, es HTTPS, dos puntos, dos slashes, viene la C minúscula, la U, doble T, punto, L, Y, todo eso es en minúscula, un slash más, y empezamos con las mayúsculas, la E, la T, la I minúscula, P mayúscula, TIM en mayúscula, T E A M 2022. Seguro también va a estar fijado, así que no vamos a tener problemas para rellenarlos. Recuerden que solo tienen 15 minutitos para rellenarlo. Sí, claro que sí, querido Kurt. En este momento ya lo están fijando en el chat. Ya está. Listo, lo tienen fijado debajo del vídeo que están viendo en vivo. Está ahí en la parte posterior en el chat. Está el logo de English Teachers in Peru y al ladito está registre su asistencia y el link que está fijado. Lo acaban de colocar, así que desde ahí también pueden acceder, así como como también pueden tomarle en este momento una captura a la pantalla. Recuerden que la última parte, después del último slash, ETIP Team 2022, tiene que estar tal cual, respetando mayúscula y minúscula. En este caso, la única minúscula ahí es la I. Muchísimas gracias, querido Kurt. Y ahora sí, vamos ya concluyendo con este webinar, no sin antes agradecer al hermoso... Ah, al hermoso equipo humano que lidera esta comunidad de English Teachers in Perú y a cada uno de ustedes, estimados maestros, también por su asistencia el día de hoy. A todos los administradores que están detrás de toda la transmisión, apoyando en el canal de YouTube, en los grupos de WhatsApp, donde se presentan diferentes dudas, apoyando a toda la audiencia, participantes, para que puedan estar conectados sin ningún problema. Ahora sí, queridos administradores, estimado Enrique, podemos encender las camaritas. Encendemos todas las camaritas para poder hacer el cierre a este webinar. A nombre de toda la comunidad English Teachers in Perú, estimado Enrique, quiero agradecerte de todo corazón tu presencia el día de hoy. Creo que eh, es un punto realmente muy importante, un tema interesantísimo. Todos lo que, los que sí hemos llegado a dar en el caso del examen de ascenso y de nombramiento, eh, sí o sí han venido preguntas relacionadas y creo que es un más para nosotros el saber diferenciar entre ambas cosas, porque la verdad, pues muchos este, nos llegamos a confundir, ¿no? Porque el, el propósito es para nosotros similar, ¿no? Que es el trabajo de alguna manera en equipo, pero con diferentes fines, tal vez, y con un proceso que tiene en algún momento algunas diferencias, que tú lo has explicado perfectamente bien. Miles, miles de gracias a nombre de cada maestro que se ha conectado el día de hoy eh, para este webinar, alrededor de 500 docentes que han estado estado muy atentos y a nombre de todos ellos y todo el equipo administrativo presente este fortísimo aplauso estimado Enrique el día de hoy por tu gran presentación tal vez algunas palabras para despedirte la audiencia yeah well thank you thank you everyone it's always a pleasure I uh, as you mentioned Mariela I always uh, you know I'm a true believer of uh, continuous professional development and I love sharing with colleagues uh, these are key concepts I always say like as as teachers we need to know the theory behind what we do in the classroom right we need to be practitioners but we need to also be uh, theoretical practitioners and, and that's our responsibility and I I congratulate everyone uh, who has joined today and I also thank you all uh, for, for organizing this. It's, it's amazing what you do, and I'm really grateful for, for what you do. So thank you, thank you again. 
Muchísimas gracias a ti, querido Enrique, por tu presencia una vez más y a todo el equipo de Fanglish que siempre nos acompaña en los webinars también. Muchísimas gracias. Nos despedimos el día de hoy, todos los administradores que hemos estado presentes aquí y quienes también están detrás de toda esta transmisión. Con ustedes ha estado Miss Ángela Salazar que ha estado en la ronda de preguntas, Teacher David Cuadros, que el día de hoy ha estado presentando a nuestro speaker, Teacher Ricardo Núñez, que ha estado súper activo en YouTube, acompañando a todos. De igual manera, Miss Miriam Córdoba, que ha estado con nosotros el día de hoy, muy atenta en YouTube. A nuestro queridísimo Kurt Vilela Matos, administrador de la comunidad, que nos ha dado el exit ticket el día de hoy y que va a estar además en el roundtable de la próxima semana con nuestros colegas. Eh, de igual manera, un... Saludo especial de parte de Miss Verónica Milan, administradora de la comunidad, y eh, Teacher José Ortega, que está detrás de toda esta transmisión. Los esperamos la próxima semana. No falten, se vienen interesantes webinars y ya estamos a poco a poco de cerrar este ciclo de verano de webinars y esperamos contar siempre con su apoyo, su participación para seguir fortaleciendo nuestra formación docente. Bye, bye.